Hey everybody, welcome to church. It is great to be with you today. My name is Nick and this is Betsan. How are you doing? Are you okay? I'm doing fabulous. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. That's amazing. Really well. Now we're going to go into a time of worship. So if you're able, why don't you stand with us and just like David danced before the Lord, why don't we celebrate God today? Come on.
outside kiss. It's <clears throat> so sorry. Tom's is still having his morning bath. It's Sunday and you've made it, which is great. Missing you all still, but it's the summer holidays. Woo! So exciting. I hope you've all been managing to get up to some good fun. Who many of you completed last week's drumming challenge? Thanks, Ethan. We had lots of fun doing that. Well, we've got some more great resources for you this morning, so why not ask your grown-up to head on over to alivechurch.org.uk forward slash kids, and you can download this week's pack there. But Thomas, shall we pray for everyone? Brilliant, guys. Let's talk to God. Father God, I want to thank you for every child uh, in their homes right now who are listening to this morning's service. Father, would every child from alive know how much that we love them, but even more that you love them too. Father, would they walk ever closer to you and know what it is today to be a friend of God. Father, would you pour smiles and joy and blessings into each home this morning and they'd have lots of fun with this week's resources. Amen. Have a great Sunday, guys. Bye. you great to see you i hope you're all good all having great weeks i absolutely loved sophie's encouragement on the we are alive youth instagram um, this week so well done sophie and also we've got so many ways for you to connect within church this week we've got connect groups we've also got the summer sessions on a friday on youtube so make sure you check that out and after the service head over to soundcloud to listen to the podcast now before i go just want to pray over all the youth across all the different locations so let me pray so lord god i thank you for all the youth i just pray that you'll protect them and be with them um, during this week in jesus name i pray amen Hello, this week we are going to learn a few stories from some leaders of how they've coped during this time that we've had to stay home. It's been difficult for some, they've had to homeschool their children, and it's been very difficult not seeing family, which is something that I found difficult. All our family live in Lincoln and attend a live church, so we usually see them regularly, but obviously haven't been able to. So we've FaceTimed, we've done virtual hugs, and that's been great but it has been a time when I think we've had to lean into God more because we know he's there, we know we trust him, we know he helps us. But during a time when we've not been able to rely on some of the things that we've become used to, we've had to say to God, you're the constant in our lives and we have to give everything to you and trust you. So as things begin to ease up a little bit, for some it's a little bit fearful of how far do I go? How safe is it? And for some, it's like, great, let's get out there again and enjoy the things we used to. So let's listen now to some stories from some of the other leaders of how life has been for them while they've been at home during these weeks, managing children, managing work, and generally living. So over lockdown, God has been speaking to us um, so clearly and about so many different things. It really has been amazing how close we've felt to God and his presence all around us. And um, God's been speaking to us about who we are and our identity. He's been speaking to us about the fact that we're children of God and about rest and trusting him. One of the things that God has spoken really clearly about is the idea that we can trust him in this season. And no matter what we face and what's going on, we can trust him that he's got it and that he's with us and for us. Yeah, and we've loved being able to connect uh, loads more with the people around us, uh, our neighbours, our family, uh, being at home. Uh, it's felt really significant for us to bed down into our local community to serve our neighbours in new ways and build relationship and friendship. But as well as that, we've felt a genuinely uh, fresh heart call from God for the city of Lincoln mm -hmm. and uh, for impacting the whole city. And so it's been incredible to kind of go uh, into a, a magnifying glass into our locality, but also to pray over our city and some of the walks we've done uh, around the top of the hill and praying over the city and hearing God's voice for what he wants to do in this city, knowing that it's significant in his plans. That's just sparked our hearts afresh for his people and his way mm. in Lincoln. It's been brilliant yeah, it to hear God's heart 
and to partner with him, uh, praying it back to him and saying amen to everything that he wants to do in our mm. life. And so as we come to reemerge, we're excited, we're full of energy, and um, we're really believing God has great things for us as we've heard from him and has he has just loved us so deeply. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael, and I'll be sharing with you what I have learned through the pandemic. For me, about a month into the pandemic, that was it. I had completely lost it. I'd lost my routine, and that was just enough for me. It seemed as though everything was confusing. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Work was changing. You know, everything around me just seemed to be spinning around. But in that same period, I had a conversation with um, a dear friend of mine and he sent an email through. And in, in that email, I'll paraphrase, he did say that he said, God, is not just sat in the heavenly places watching us when we go through difficult situations or challenging situations. He said, God is actually in that situation with us and he goes through that situation with us. And he said many other things which I cannot remember now, but this one particularly stuck with me. And I kept thinking about it. And I said to myself, Michael, God is with you through this. But most importantly, I then kept thinking, if God is with me, then he must have something to say to me and he must um, have a plan because we're going through this together. And so I started communicating with God in that knowledge that God is actually in the pandemic with me, knowing um, that I could cast all my cares on him, that he cares for me and not just for me, but for everyone around me. And doing this, I really found peace through the period. And this has stuck with me. I now feel like when I go through a challenging time, I must remember that God is with me and that he cares. And that gives me peace. Amen. So one of the things that I found during lockdown that really impacted on me was the pace of life. Um, just prior to lockdown, I think we were running around every day, every so. night, every <laughs> evening, every weekend. And uh, that ability just to take a step back and to spend time with God um, allowed you know, my prayer life to develop and it allowed that extra time just to get to know, to get to know our neighbours and also to get to know the community uh, around us. And I spent a lot of time taking the dog out for a walk and getting to see people and chat with people and having that time, not having to kind of rush by and just to spend time with them, talking to them and getting to know them. I found that really helpful. I think that with working um, with Food Bank as well, it's been great to get out into the community and to see people. And we've had some wonderful conversations with people that we've never met before, just by taking food and being with them. And also part of that as well is that we've had a great time um, working in unity with other churches in the town and developing relationships and working alongside them. And sometimes it's great, isn't it, to be able to journey things together even when things seem difficult, because by doing that, it helps to build that relationship. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, uh, alongside that, spending time in prayer with other uh, churches has been great. Well, that's been marvellous. Uh, we've seen a real step forward in terms of unity in the town with the churches coming together, praying for the same thing, praying, you know, with purpose, with the same vision, wanting to see uh, people protected, wanting to see people uh, saved, uh, wanting to see God really move in the uh, town, which I think has been brilliant. Yeah, I think the, the, the emphasis for us as well has been on family, both our own personal family, but church family, mm. and making sure and checking on people that they had all that they needed. Um, and I think 
you know, we've seen that it's brought out the very, very best in people. And I think some of the memories that I will have about the community is on those Thursday evenings when we were going out on the street and applauding all those people who work in the NHS and in the care sector. Yeah. Because it was really a very moving moment when you were stood applauding with everybody else on the road and in the in the estate. Yeah. And actually hearing all that echoing around for miles, you know, the sound of people applauding was really a very moving moment and it's a great idea and a great sort of a focus isn't it of showing people being together in community and caring and loving each other yeah brilliant and who am i that the highest king would welcome me i was lost but he bought me oh his love for me
what I have learned um, during this period a lot, um, we've realized better than ever the importance of communion with God in a in a in a deeper level. Um, we break bread as a family together. We encourage our children to be doing the same. Confessing the word of God, it is of paramount importance as well. Um, declaring Psalm 91 and other relevant and scriptures. Um, especially in Psalm 91, where it says, the plague will not come near our tent. Um, God has declared this year, the year of his presence. And we didn't know what that entails, but we know that no matter what we go through, God is present with us. We are frontline workers. We have to put on the whole armor of God daily because we have come to the realization that no matter what you do, it has to be God. And that we have been doing. Uh, we, are, we have strong connection with our church because that's very, very important. It put the solitary in family, the Bible says. Connect group, we have become stronger, you know, connecting with one another, declaring the word of God over one another, checking on one another, breaking bread together. Just like the Bible says in the book of Acts, uh, we have deeper level of God's presence. And, you know, connecting with church members, checking how people are, uh, that's very, very important to us as well. Family connection, we realize that some things are more important uh, than, than, than ever. Um, all of a sudden, you know, it's like our eyes are just open and we need to realize that, do you know what? God is in charge. No matter what happens, God has to be number one. He has to be the center and he has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We're still going through it, but God is on this throne. Praise the Lord. Over the past few weeks, I believe that God's been talking to me personally about how church really is about loving him and loving people. And that so often for myself, I get the loving him bit, but often I love systems and processes and spreadsheets and ways of operating and doing things. And God's been calling me back to loving people, giving my life to people in my leadership role, in all that I am and all that I do to make this about loving him, giving my whole attention, devotion to him, but also giving my heart to people. And as I move from lockdown, as we move from lockdown, we're excited to see that uh, come to fruition in our lives um, and God places into places where people, not systems, are the call over our lives. Yeah, and for me, the beginning of lockdown was really hard, a real challenge, as I know it was for many, uh, trying to continue to work full time at home, uh, whilst also homeschooling a uh, five-year-old and teenagers, as well as managing the day-to-day, -day, um, living at home and keeping everyone going. It was a real challenge. Um, and then I kind of faced being furloughed uh, from the job that I love as family pastor here at Alive Church. Um, and that was an inward battle, an inward challenge then, not being able to fulfil um, the role that I have, um, but also the opportunity to then be with the children at home. Um, and before lockdown, uh, as is the same with many of you, uh, life was really busy, uh, lots of evenings out and ferrying the children backwards and forwards. So I had a battle going on of um, where my place was, but I felt God really talked to me that actually I needed to embrace this time um, and use it to its full advantage uh, to be with the children at home, to be the support that they needed. So I feel that gave me the permission uh, to give my undivided attention to my family uh, here at home. And now I look forward to the balance of family and church as we move into the future. So what have I learned during lockdown? So there have been three key things really um, that came out for me during lockdown. So the first thing was actually this emphasis around being able to trust God when I don't know what's going on and nobody else around me seems to know um, because the situation we've been through is quite been unprecedented because normally there's always somebody who has an idea what might happen, but nobody did. Even the government was planning as they went along as things unfolded. Mm -hmm. So it was about being able to trust God even under those circumstances. And what I also found was that actually when you have don't have that choice but to trust God you will find the strength to do normal things in abnormal circumstances 
So that was really quite a great lesson. And then the second thing was around time because all of this lockdown happened so suddenly and it made me start to question where I spent my time well on when I spent my time on what I did with my time because I looked back at the things some of the things that I did with my time before lockdown and when lockdown came and I couldn't do any of those things and I'm still alive I'm still breathing <laughs> And I'm still doing things. So it's made me realize that actually there are some things that I can cut out and it will give me more time to do more productive things and perhaps more of the things that God wants me to be doing. And I think thirdly, the third thing was around relationship because it made me realize what an amazing privilege it is to be a part of God's family. Um, and it made me start to think about because when you, how people have responded during lockdown, connection with one another, and even looking at other churches where my siblings go, how they've been connecting together and supporting, it's just been so phenomenal and amazing. And that made me actually come to start to realize that actually, you know, relationships, we, we do life, we do relationships, but it's almost like sometimes um, um, doing life and relationships are two separate things, but actually they're one and the same. And it's about my relationship with God, that one-to-one -one, and also relationship with others um, around me being my immediate church family or in the wider church context outside of my immediate church. Um, we're all still in the one big wider family and it's about strengthening those relationships. And sometimes you will strengthen those relationships by actually being honest. Um, sometimes you strengthen those relationships by being more supportive, by loving people and being demonstrative in, in your love towards those around you. So I think those are the key things really that came out strongly for me um, uh, during lockdown. We now come to our offering time. Love and giving are always connected. When we love people, we want to give, we want to be generous towards them. And you know, it's very important that we understand today that God has lavished his love upon us and he's so generously blessed us. And so offering time allows us to bring of our tithes and our offerings to God with thankfulness and also to thank God for all that he's doing in his church among his people. And you know, I do believe that uh, in this season, things are a little bit more difficult, aren't they? And, and yet I believe that when God demonstrates his love, it is with a measure of sacrifice. And so can I encourage us all to give today. And as we give today, God will give to us. We're in his hands. And so I would ask us, let's with generosity and let's with joy uh, give in to our offering today. You can do this in three ways. Firstly, we can give online. Secondly, we can give by text. And thirdly, we could set up a standing order. So let's give, let's remember God loves us. And let's out of our hearts of love, express for some sacrificially our hearts towards God we're deeply grateful that he's looking after us in this period of time. And I'm really grateful for the church that he's placed me in. Let's give as God has given to us. God bless you as you give. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember the Lord your God. This is clearly a mirror of the instruction given by Jesus at the Last Supper to do this in remembrance of him. The Hebrew word for remember here can be translated as to be mindful of or aware of God. And the opposite of this can be to be forgetful of God or unaware of God. And we can go about our daily lives so frequently unaware of the presence of God around us. So as we come to the communion table this morning and we receive the bread and the wine, we receive him in all his fullness. We remember him, we are mindful of him, and we are aware of his presence around us and in us.
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me I'm waiting for change to come but knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me Your promise still stands Cause great is your faithfulness Faithfulness Still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail
your promise still stands Cause great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hand This is my confidence You've never failed Morning Church, with my family and friends being well during this period, this uh, extended four or five months has probably been the greatest uh, period of my life. Certainly not the highs of other days, but I have loved the extra time I've got to spend with my kids. I am so blessed uh, by my children. At a macro level, I am very patient. But at a micro level, I am incredibly impatient. And for me, this period I have enjoyed not sat at red lights uh, waiting for the signal to change. I have enjoyed not travelling to me. I have enjoyed not having to unlock the chain at the office car park. Other than uh, the blessing of looking after children, there's been very little friction in this period of time for stopping us getting stuff done. I thrive on busy and an impossible to achieve to-do list, but I am not a fan of hurry. I believe this period, this lockdown has almost been like a time machine. We've gone into the future with the almost universal adoption of technology and we've gone back to maybe 1954 with the pace of life. I don't think there is a more valuable time than a meal time where you gather around, you turn the technology off and you chat and you engage and talk about the day. And th during this period, we have all, or most of us, got a far greater understanding and appreciation of what it is to practice Sabbath and what a day the Sabbath is, a day with God a day with family and a day doing stuff that is life-giving. In this extra period of still uh, during lockdown, I believe God has been teaching us to pray prayers that get answered. By praying prayers to see God's kingdom extended rather than just coming with a shopping list of wants and desires, being really intentional about praying for people. Katie and I have seen a number of miracles during lockdown where we've prayed, been out on a prayer walk at 7 a.m. and by nine o'clock an answer has come. For me, this has been an incredible period of seeing God's kingdom extended by praying prayers that are super easy to answer, get answered because we are praying, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. So I think for me, I've learned a lot about the importance of my relationship with my colleagues and the people that I work with. Um, and it's quite ironic, really, because I haven't seen my colleagues face to face for over five months now. And yet I feel like I know them better than I've ever known them before. Um, you know, through video, I have been invited into people's living rooms. I've met their partners, their pets, their children. Uh, we've done quizzes together. We've drank wine together. We have um, laughed together. We've done birthday parties and in some cases we've cried together, which I've never experienced that really within my working environment. Um, but, you know, I think suddenly we're in this period where we have gone through and are facing very difficult times together. And again, that's something I haven't experienced in my working environment. You know, usually we go through the ups and downs of life and um, we experience pain and grief quite independently of one another at work and so we maybe find it harder to relate to or to talk to one another about it um, but suddenly we found ourselves in this situation where we're all facing uncertainty together and so it's really sort of pulled us together 
Um, and, you know, we've kind of been able to look out for one another. We've had periods where some of us have gone through periods of anxiety or harder weeks. And we've all been able to just kind of be there for one another. And um, as a result, we've grown a lot closer. We've learned to be vulnerable with one another and to be honest. And it's, it's been a really great time in that sense. And so I think I've just learned the importance of saying, how are you? And being willing to sort of stay in that moment and really listen to people. And also just the importance of um, kind of how much time I spend with my colleagues and therefore the importance of friendship through that and being willing to pray for each other and to um, to offer prayer, you know, in an environment where often at work prayer is so rarely available um, and just to have fun with one another. So it's been a really good time for me. I think the uh, the number one thing that God's been speaking to us about over this whole season, over this whole sort of lockdown period is how do we still be the church uh, when we don't have our gatherings? Our Sunday morning church service uh, that we sort of put so much emphasis on before, we don't have that at the moment. And so how, how do we continue to be the church? Because we are still the church. And so how do we continue to be the church? How do we use what we have in our hands? How do we find out what we have in our hands and then use it? to continue to be the church in this in this season yeah and there's this shift isn't there from the gathered church to us as individuals taking responsibility for being the church being the hands and feet of jesus into our communities into our families into our friendship circles into our workplaces even though we've maybe not been able to physically go to a workplace and just understanding that it can be in the really small things. It can be in just texting someone uh, with a verse of encouragement, texting someone to ask what they need prayer for. It's just those small things that can really help us to understand in a different way what it is to be the church. Hey church, I've learned so much over this time of lockdown, many different layers, but I know that I've learned this, that the church is not the building, it is a community of committed, passionate followers of Jesus Christ. I've loved seeing the church rise up in this time. I also believe that God has been doing some great things with a simplicity way of life. Now that doesn't mean less, but it means being more effective for the kingdom. Simple, prioritising what God is doing and following him. I love that so much. I've also learned to love your neighbour and be passionate about the community where God has placed you, whether that be your workplace or whether that be that physical location of little gifts of blessing and random acts of kindness. I see that as being so effective. I've also learned that I believe the church needs multiple access points, a hybrid church moving forward in the new season that we have passionate gatherings where many people come together to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. But we also keep going with our amazing connect groups, doing life together, building community and friendships. And I believe that the hybrid way forward for us is really important. It's not just big, it's not just small. It's not throwing away things that have been in the past, but it's embracing what God is doing in the new season and learning and building on things that we've done in the past. I believe this is the time for the church to rise up. I'm very excited about the new season and I thank God for all he's doing in this time. So today we've been hearing from a number of our leaders how they are processing things. Obviously, we've been faced with situations we were not prepared for, but actually as leaders, we're feeling we want to hear what God is saying to us and to us as a church so that when we come back to gatherings, it will be with a sense of new vision and clarity. And so we really are feeling that God wants us to enjoy life, life together. And we are also sensing that we don't want to just rush back into programs and lots of activity. Uh, we want to be people that are able to process what we feel God is saying to us. And uh, so character development has been very important. And so will you pray for us as leaders as we come through and we'll give you some definition as to how we think things are going to progress in the future. We do believe there are going to be a few changes. And as we go forward, please pray so that we will shortly be communicating 
little bit more of our vision, our values remain the same, but there will be some shifts and changes that allow us actually to care for our uh, church uh, better and also that we will be able to earth our faith into communities uh, where we live. So thank you for being with us today. We've got an opportunity now to pray. Every time we're together, we love to pray a simple prayer that opens our lives to living faith. And so today we're going to pray for some, it may be the first time that you've prayed this prayer. Open your heart to God today. Receive Jesus as your friend and savior and the Holy Spirit will fill you. Choose a new life today. And for most of us uh, online today, we want to just underline our faith and continue serving the Lord. So let's pray together. Um, every week at Alive, we give you an opportunity to respond to the gospel and to become a follower of Jesus. And we do that through a simple prayer. You can repeat this after me if you wanna pray that prayer today and give your life to Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your grace to forgive me and your love to change me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please forgive me for the sin in my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior with your help I will live my life for you. Amen. Amazing. Now, if you said that prayer and if you're watching on our website, please go ahead and click our next steps button where we would love to get connected with you. And if you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, go to our website at www.alivechurch.org.uk slash welcome, where we would also love to get connected with you. Well, it's been great to connect with one another today. We've got so much going on this week that you can get involved with. We'd love to tell you all about that. Well, every Thursday at 7.15 p.m. we have our Revive Prayer. And on Sunday night at 8 p.m. we have Sunday Night Live, which you can join on your location Facebook page. Amazing. So to close, we are going to go into the moment's new song, Fearless. Come on. It's been great to see you today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.